Obviously, a lot of people are having to wear face masks at the moment due to the current uh, virus outbreak. And a friend has pointed out that health workers who are wearing these all day are often coming off shift with uh, quite nasty marks on their faces where the elastic has dug in. And this has not gone unnoticed because there are people out there 3D printing these headbands just to take the pressure off so that the elastic goes over the bands instead of over your ears. Uh, obviously, 3D printing is a fairly slow process. Uh, but if you've got enough people doing this, I guess, uh, you know, you can get the numbers out. But it's not going to compete with injection moulding where I can be spitting one of these out every few seconds. Uh, I have a few reservations about this particular design. I've had a look online and there are a few others out there, but they're all much of a muchness. They're all this kind of outside latching, fishbone kind of design. Uh, not impossible to do that. I've done something similar with uh, the wrap strap tree ties that I did a few years ago and if I put the elastic over here and get it in the latches uh, that does seem to hold fairly well so that's a possibility I just have to respin this and invert the cells on the other end and um, because these were designed to be elasticated and quite flexible uh, that's a viable solution uh, I'm not 100% happy with doing outside latches though because this is supposed to be a comfortable product I would want to make this as thin as I can possibly get away with and these I think are about two and a half millimeters thick I mean it's doable but uh, I'd like to go a bit thinner than that if possible uh, and then of course your your latches are going to be so flimsy that the thing may well come undone uh, the other problem is mass producing these although I can uh, do sheets of them this was on a slightly bigger machine than what I've got and you just tear them off there are little gates on the wings holding them together uh, this was actually a tree tie version hence the holes in the middle for screwing the, the buckle to a stake so this is possible but I think it's going to be a little bit rough wearing these on your head all day so instead it's been suggested that maybe we just look at a straight band uh, and this is a piece of cardboard I've reinforced it slightly with some silver paper silver tape at the ends uh, and that does actually hold reasonably well so this suggests that I could get away with a fairly thin plain band with a couple of latching internal latching points at either end uh, and that may be a more elegant and, uh, and softer solution for people more comfortable to wear all day long so that's what I'm going to have a go at this is the rough concept for what I'm looking at here uh, basically a plain band about an inch and a bit across and however long I choose to go and I'm going to put four of these pips on basically so that I can get four different sizes you just cut these off depending on what you need to, to fit your head and that's obviously going to depend on how big your head is and what kind of mask you're wearing and how much elastic you've got and so on uh, I can probably do all this in a single pass with a six mil slot drill which means it's going to be relatively quick uh, to produce and I've already chopped a piece of aluminium out to do the job it's not going to take a lot because the fixed half on my molding setup is just a plain steel face plate at the moment uh, it's a little bit rough so there might be a few imperfections on it but it does mean I can get away with just a single sided mold and shut off against that steel plate so I'm gonna to have to drill a few holes in there just to bolt the thing in uh, I'll need some vents and because I might come back and add a secondary face plate to this so I can get geometry on the other side uh, I'm going to add the pry points and magnet holes and guide pin points and stuff like that as well. So this is just prep work, basically drilling a load of holes. Uh, and then it's a case of pocketing this out and we'll see if it works. Uh, I think I can probably get away with something like an 8090A polyurethane, which is fairly soft and flexible. I think these might be slightly stiffer than that. But uh, we'll see. And if that doesn't work, I'll have a look around for whatever materials I've got that might do the job. So that's my mission for the next day or two. Uh, we'll see how quickly I can get this done, get some out the door and see what kind of feedback we get from people. Right, here's the plate in place. Uh, everything's lined up currently on the origin. Uh, so I'll start by cutting the vents on either side, then add the holes.
nearly there. I just need to add some pry points uh, to either side and at the other end. So uh, if I do add a counterplate to this, I've got something to pry it out with. So they're not going to take long. It's only about 45 minutes to drill all the holes. So uh, we're not doing too bad. Right, down to the last few bits now, I just need to add a very small vent here which will be 50 microns deep uh, and another one on the other side and then I just need a couple of uh, referencing points over this end and we're ready for the main cavity. Right, and that's the plate set up. Now we just need to do the cavity, which will probably take a few hours, but uh, we still haven't got to keep changing bits. Right, well we're all set up for the final cavity, which uh, I've marked up with these black marks to give me a rough idea of where we're going. And I've done the whole geometry in one pass, so this is going to take a while. Uh, I'm going to start at 0.5 mil, go down to maybe 0.9 give a finishing pass at one, uh, see what it looks like. You can always come in and go a bit deeper if necessary. But uh, it's now just gone two, so we'll give this uh, a spin and see how long it takes. Right, well that was about 90 minutes, so we'll do another pass uh, to get down to one millimetre and then probably a finishing pass as well, but it looks okay, it will polish up quite nicely and uh, then obviously I've got to do the, the clasps over the top of these circular bits that are left over, uh, but it's getting on for four o'clock, so uh, I'm going to have to stop this afternoon and finish it tomorrow, otherwise I'm going to be here yeah, probably till about seven o'clock. So uh, we made a start, we'll finish it in the morning and have a go at moulding it. Right, I've done another couple of passes on this and taken it down to one millimetre and it's pretty smooth so I think that will polish up quite nicely. Uh, I've now got to cut the, uh, the little anchor shaped clasps uh, on these uh, pips that I've left up. Uh, but unfortunately my cheap Chinese carbide slot drill isn't centre cutting. So uh, I'm going to use one three flute that is and just drop down to uh, two millimetres uh, and then I can come in with the six mil and clear those out. So that shouldn't take terribly long and uh, then we'll fire up the moulding machine and see if this thing actually works. Right, well apart from a bit of tidying up, that's the mould cut. So uh, get the moulding machine warmed up, 
and we'll give it a spin. And here is the finished mould plate. Uh, I've cleaned it up a bit, not polished it, just uh, taken as many burrs off as I can. I think there's still probably a few in these awkward to reach areas, but they might come off uh, after I've moulded it a few times. Uh, I've not bothered populating the magnets or the guide pins because I'm going to be shutting this off against a, a flat plate on the fixed half. That's a little bit rough, so it's going to leave a few marks, but uh, I can add a secondary faceplate to this if necessary. Uh, a couple of other issues we might have, uh, I'm possibly because of these walls, as the plastic flows, it's got to come back in around these, so I might get some air trapping uh, around here. It's not going to be the end of the world, it should still function, but I can possibly put a small gate through there uh, to try and fix that. Uh, the material I'm going to be using is uh, a fairly soft polyurethane. Uh, it is FDA food approved, but uh, it's not medical approved. There is another grade in the range which is has USP class 6, so it's been rated for skin contact, non-allergy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the manufacturers don't test every last material in their range, so I would imagine that the material I'm going to be using probably would pass those tests uh, if it were uh, needed, but uh, I think at the moment we'll uh, just give it a go and see if the damn thing works. Uh, the other issue I'm going to have with uh, the polyurethanes, it's notoriously difficult uh, to get thin, th thin, quite wide area mouldings to come out perfectly clear. You tend to get a bit of uh, air trapping in it. Uh, small voids but that's cosmetic rather than functional. Uh, I think that's partly due to the fact that I'm not able to dry the material quite as well as I would like. It really needs a desiccant dryer and I've only got a hot air uh, oven but uh, I've had the material on about 100 degrees for a couple of hours so I should have got rid of most of it. But uh, yeah, reasonably convincing piece. I think I can mould it. So uh, only one way to find out, let's stick it in the machine and see what happens. Right, we've got the mould in place over here and I can swing the camera around. You might be able to see and on this side, this is just basically a blank steel plate with a couple of feed points. So uh, it's going to be a little bit rough on there, which will leave a few marks, but we can fix that with a, a new face plate if necessary. Right, this is the first attempt. I don't know what kind of shot weight we need, but I'm guessing probably around 10 cubic centimetres. So let's have a go. 10 cubic centimetres. There we go, first attempt. It's gone in. Only better. Let's have a go. And we have got a little bit of air trapping there, which is to be expected. And we've got quite a bit of draw coming out as well, this material. Probably. I think we're winning. So I'm now getting a reasonably clean moulding. I haven't yet tested whether they're functional. I've got to cut these uh, little gate sprues off. But, uh, they're not looking too bad. I think if I did these in a colour just to hide some of the, the blemishes, I am getting a little bit of air trapping here, which uh, I kind of expected, but I might be able to fix that by just putting a slight gate over there because that would break through pretty easily. But, it's uh, working reasonably well and uh, running at 11.3 cubic centimetres so 
not too bad as long as it works. And if it doesn't, I can either use a slightly stiffer grade material or uh, just reinforce those little anchor points. Right, well, here is the finished moulding. I think I might put some colourant in just to uh, hide some of the, the bubble marks, but they're not too bad, actually. Uh, it's holding reasonably well for a first attempt. It could do with a little bit more bracing, I think, on these pips. They are bending back a little bit, uh, or possibly just a slightly stiffer material, but it's plenty flexible enough. Uh, the fact that I'm using the two central ones suggests that I've probably made this a bit bigger than I needed to, but obviously you can cut these down and the size you need is going to depend on how much elastic you've got and how big your head is. But uh, I guess the acid test is what does it actually feel like? Uh, and to be honest, it's not too bad. This mask is at 90 degrees from where it should be. Uh, that's easy to fix. You just cut the uh, elastic, cross them over and tie them back on. But that isn't really pinching. It feels very comfortable around the back of the neck. Uh, it's covering my nose and mouth quite well. Uh, and I guess if you had to wear one of these all day, this is possibly a, a better solution than having it behind your ears. So um, I guess what we'll do now is get a few of these out to people who might actually be using them on a daily basis, get some feedback. And if I need to re-spin it and do a, a slightly improved version two, then I know what I'm doing now. So it's not going to take all that long to improve on it. But as a first attempt, yeah, not too bad.